Assalamu alaikum. So in this video, we'll be covering the food drop. Food drop is really important topic. It's confusing sometimes. And in this video, we'll try to simplify the most common causes of food drop and how to differentiate between those from a, a clinical examination point of view. I am Mohammed Draz, and this is your knowledge platform about the brain, spine, and beyond. All right, so to talk about food drop, as you can see in this picture, uh, what we have here is the uh, spinal cord. Um, and that ends up into the coda equina down here. And what we have coming up, uh, this one is the L5 nerve root. And here we have the sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve will then divide into two, two branches. One is the common perineal nerve, and the other one is a tibial nerve. And I'm talking about those branches because those are really essential to understand the mechanism or the potential cause for food drop. So any of those can be involved and lead to food drop somehow. We will talk about that. But again, before we jump into what's the function of each one of those, let's talk about the function of the food or what the food um, possible movement that can be done by the food. So if we think about the food, it can do four main directions or four main functions. The first one is the dorsi flexion of the foot. And then we have the plantar flexion. And then the foot can do inversion and also can do eversion. Okay, so for the foot to do all of these movements will rely on those nerve root L5 or the main nerves, either the sciatic or common perineal nerve or the tibial nerve. For you to remember, and it's an easy way to remember that so that you don't get confused about the function of each one, we'll talk first about the L5 nerve root. And the easiest way to, th to remember this one is a mnemonic, which helps you to remember it, which is L will be lied. And lied which means that would be the L is L5, and that leads, so the L will be L5, and then the I would be inversion, and the E would be eversion, and the D would be dorsi flexion. So that would be the function of the L5 nerve root, all summarized in the word light. If we think about the a common perineal nerve, so the common perineal nerve, this would be P, perineal nerve, so that would be PED, okay, so that would be E, which is eversion, and D, which is the dorsi flexion. And as you can see, the main difference here is that the L5 will do inversion, which is not included in the perineal nerve, which is one of the main factors to differentiate. Then, in terms of the tibial nerve, which is the other branch of the sciatic nerve, as we mentioned here, will do something called TIP. So that's T for tibial nerve, will do inversion, but will do the P, which is the plantar flexion. Okay, so as you can see here, What's common between the tibial nerve and the uh, L5 is the inversion. The, and what's common between the L5 and the common perineal nerve is the eversion. Okay, so now, and what about the sciatic nerve? The sciatic nerve will, will, will basically be, you know, if it's affected, will include everything. So we'll include both the LIED, the L-I-E-D, and the PED, which is, sorry, the PED and the TIP, because it's two branches, the common perineal and the tibial nerve. So makes sense if we say the sciatic nerve would be basically be the PED plus the TIP, so that you can, you can know what will happen if that's affected. So that now is very easy to remember and very easy to differentiate between the causes. So if you think, is the cause of the, um, if the patient has the inversion is affected, then the patient, the, the food drop is likely to be caused by the L5 nerve root. And that will differentiate that from the common perineal nerve, 
which where we, the inversion will be spared, will not be affected. What's the most common causes for those ones to happen? So the common pronial nerve, the most common cause to happen is likely either to be trauma or it could be in relation to some compression. So the compression could be in the form of uh, long sitting with crossed legs or something like a baker cyst around the knee. In terms of the L5 nerve root, the most common cause is basically a spinal pathology of some sort, very likely to be a disc prolapse. So for you to differentiate between those two, the main thing, as I said, is the, is the inversion affected or not? In terms of the L5, what's an addition to the L5 also is that it, it supplies the abductors of the hip. The abductors of the hip. If you haven't watched our video about the L5 nerve root, please go back and watch that through the, um, the playlist of the neurological examination. So in that case means that the patient will have unable to abduct the hip, so moving the whole of his leg outside or far away from the other leg. The other thing, if we go higher up with the sciatic nerve, the sciatic nerve, as I said, will be everything will be affected, including the inversion, the eversion, the plantar flexion, and the dorsiflexion. But also, what's an addition to the sciatic nerve would be the possibility of affection of the knee, the knee flexion as well. All right. So that's basically summarizes the main causes of the foot drop. And here we're talking mainly about the peripheral causes of foot drop because there are still central causes that can cause that. This could be in the form of a very uh, either sort of um, disease in the brain, could be a compressive pathology in the brain, like a brain tumor, which is specifically focusing on the motor area and specifically affecting the, um, uh, the motor area of the leg or of the foot, which can happen sometimes, quite rare, or any uh, disease in the brain that can again affect the motor area in the brain. So that can be a central cause in comparison to a peripheral cause, which is we're focusing here. The main thing to uh, remember here is the mnemonic, which says the lied, the ped, and the tip simplifies all of that. And then you can differentiate what could be the cause and how to differentiate between um, the L5 or the common peroneal nerve uh, palsy or uh, compression. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us uh, know in the comments below what kind of videos you want to see on the channel. Please also follow us on our uh, social platforms, including LinkedIn, and uh, stay tuned for the next one.